Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Bravely Seconds. Last episode we saw that Anne was at the Great Chasm and she was talking about releasing the balls. So I guess <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and try to investigate that. I don't think we need anything from Caldisla itself. Okay, so we've got a main mission here at the um, at the Great Chasm, but it looks like we also have a side quest. Can I just land there? Okay, cool. It just lets me land here. So let's go in here. Now, I heard that inside of here, I cannot control spawning. So even though I can set my spawning to zero, I think that actually if I go in here, I will still get spawns no matter what. But before we go in there, I think we might have to do something. The keystones are all in place. And yes, the door's unlocked. Maybe not. <laughs> what does that mean? My guess is someone must be inside. Let's have a look around. Be sure to wrap up warm, Magnolia. It's freezing inside. Okay. Okay, I guess... Empire Castle. Why is Alternus's helmet right there? He's not dead in here, is he? Ooh, I don't know how this castle manages to be colder on the inside than the out. You've been here before, Idia? Yeah, with Agnes and Tiz. Look, what's that? <gasps> this helm. Alternus! Stay strong, Idia. I'm sure he's alright. Let's go look for him. Indeed. So once again, mine encounter rate cannot be adjusted. They moved it back to zero, so no matter what, I have to fight everything in here. So, yeah, this is something different from the last game. In last game, even at the Vampire Castle, um, I, need, I, I could have turned it off if I didn't want to fight. In this game, they said, no, mm -mm, you fight in everything. Wait, why did enemies get first? Okay, let's go. Now, I'm pretty sure we're level 99, so I wouldn't expect these enemies to be extremely hard. So I honestly think we'll be fine. But the only thing is, I'm the type of person, you guys know, I'm going to go through every section of this cave. So I'm going to be having a lot more battles than the normal person would. But again, we're level 99 with full... With maxed out jobs, and not to mention pretty good strategies. So I would be very surprised if we actually had trouble here. Look, this painting. That's that's Yoko and the Yokai. Yoko? Remember what Altonus said? He was going after Yoko. Why, if it isn't our loyal Minister of the Right. What? Yoko! Yoko! If you laid a hand on Alternus, I'll... I'll... Idia, don't do anything rash. <laughs> Wise advice. We think you would do well to listen. Your knight in not-so-shining armor is fine. At least he seemed healthy, running away as fast as his legs could carry him. But enough talk about him. We are much more interested in you. Perhaps you are aware that Vampire Castle is known by another name. The Hall of Truth. Where the curious can learn all there is to know. Yet some truths are not so easily faced. What if you... Would you cast off your blissful ignorance and face the truth? Then make for the floors above. But be forewarned. Before you can learn the truth, you must prove yourself worthy of it. Tis, do not think you can avoid the dangers that you would encounter in this place. Within these walls, the powers of Luxendark's guards will not avail you. This is our realm, 
We make the rules, and you have no choice but to play by them. It is only fair, yes? A truth learned through anything other than your own efforts is, is that no a dig at people at turning the encounters off? We shall await you above. Fare thee well. Well, luckily for you, I'm still overpowered, so I don't even care if you turn <laughs> off the encounters. <sighs> the truth? What is she talking about? Tis, we don't have to do anything she says. But what about Alternus? <laughs> at last it's working. Alternus! Thank heavens you're safe! Yes, it was a close call, but I made it. You should have known it was too much to handle by yourself. Do you have any idea how worried we were? Ah, well, you... Oh, you blockhead! <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we know Alternus is safe. What should we do now? Well, I don't trust that girl at all. This could very well be a trap. That is a possibility, yes. But what if she's telling the truth? Hmm. Okay, well, let's continue the game here. Let's get a chest, and there's probably just as many floors as last time if I'm correct. Okay, so this dungeon is pretty simple. We basically just have to get through it, you know? Um, just like any other dungeon Except this one is you know Somewhat harder than the other ones, but even level a max cap level well, Max recommended level of 68 is basically nothing so We'll just get through it like we usually do and unlike last game or actually last game I actually made sort of a mistake where I went through the entire castle and then I realized that each of the paintings was supposed to give us information. So I had to go back through the castle to grab all of the paintings. I know that this time they give us more information. So I'm not going to be stupid this time. On the way up, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at all the paintings, unlike last time. Okay. Bang. Okay. Let's see, is there anything over here? Okay, there's a chest. Let's see, and I forgot. Is there seven levels? I'm guessing there's there should be seven here yeah it looks like there is seven levels so honestly we've got a little bit to go but we're already technically on the second so how hard could it be right we were wondering how long you meant to keep us waiting but no matter we shall keep our promise. This is the first truth. The tale of the ambitious man. How long did we lay in slumber, that first time that we slept? We awakened and opened our eyes to the sight of a man standing before us. This man... This ambitious man had come to explore the shrine in which we slept. Twenty years ago, another man, another ambitious man, came for us. He brought with him a young girl, and within her body encased our very soul. With this, his true goal would be realized. The man had come to plunder the shrine, to claim the treasures that had been offered to us over the ages. His expedition a success, the man assembled his fleet and set sail for Gathlatio. Blissfully ignorant of the truth, the truth that within the girl's chest slept the seed of a deadly plague. Fever struck her only days into the journey. With haste, the fleet made for the nearest port. The man wanted to continue, but the girl's grandfather, the owner of the fleet, forbade it. Fearing that the girl carried a deadly disease, he appealed to the church, demanding that the girl be quarantined. The ambitious man wished to take the girl, and his treasures, home. He petitioned to the church for permission to set sail. The leaders of the church, unable to reach a consensus, sent for an exorcist. This exorcist, a man by the name of Geist, 
would free the girl of whatever evil possessed her. Those who sought to keep the girl in town thought they could use the ritual as a pretense to delay the fleet's departure. The other camp believed that once the ritual was performed, she would be cured, and there would be no more reason to hold her. And so it came to pass that a compassionate man, a covetous man, a merciful man, an ambitious man, and a wise man reached their decision. A terrible decision, the most sinful in history. The ritual was performed and the ships were allowed to leave port. The merry fleet sailed on for Gathalotio, sowing the seeds of the plague across the realm. The name of that man, the ambitious man, who roused us from slumber, was none other than Greed, Geniolja. Yes, you. Your father. What? You're saying that my father caused the Great Plague? We promised you the truth, did we not? But why take our word for it? It is all here, writ in your father's own hand. If you have the courage to face the next truth, we shall await you above. Wait, Yoko! Okay, to the next truth we go then. But first, another battle, which we will easily take care of. Battles aren't that big of an issue here. Okay, let's keep going. Up the stairs we go. Alright, so the... Okay, chest is right here. Stopwatch. Don't really need those anymore, but fair enough. Ooh, those dogs. I hate those dogs. And a guzzler? That's literally just a chomp. Can we kill it? Those things are strong. Okay, we actually killed it. But wow, that chomp was strong. Ooh, and we're poisoned apparently? Okay, well let's go ahead and just do a quick, um... What is this? Ailment? Yes. Bang and bang. Let's make sure those people do not get hurt any more than they need to. Is there anything shiny? No? Okay. Well, I just wasted all those steps. Okay. Another dog. Man, wh why do you get to go first? That's no fair. Yeah, this chomp... Or, it's a guzzler, technically. Okay, we need to be more careful. These chomps actually hurt. So... I might have to... But see, I'm just I'm just gonna run out of mana, basically. Um, yeah, I need to be more careful because I can run out of mana real easily. Okay, mushroom. So I know I can run away from one, but I just I don't want to run away, but I might have to. See, if if it's these chomps, I'm just gonna have to run away here because I'm just gonna use all of my MP and. Yeah, that's going to be a little detrimental to me, so. And I would have bought some more ethers, but I haven't been to the save guy yet, so I, I kind of neglected to do that. Ugh, it took you long enough. Did you read your father's log? No matter. It is time you learned the second truth. This is the tale of the sinful ruling. The wise men opposed to moving the young girl hoped that the ritual performed by the exorcist Geist would delay her departure. This would prevent the plague from spreading. But the ambitious man and covetous man were impatient and tried to foil their plan. Still, they could not stop Geist from reporting the girl's condition to the church's office of public health. 
Upon receiving the report, the Office of Public Health ordered the girl quarantined and barred from further travel. Regrettably, it did not end there. The covetous man within the church appealed to the merciful man. The church should use their vaunted medicine to treat the girl, said he. And the ambitious man appealed to the loving man. The poor girl deserves the finest treatment the church can offer, said he. And so it came to pass. The merciful man and the compassionate man changed their minds. They ordered that the fleet be allowed to sail. And so the ships, with their treasure and the ailing child in tow, unfurled their sails and set a course for distant Gathalotio. The fleet birthed at many towns along the way, unwittingly sowing the seeds of death at every port of call. Only when they landed on their third continent did dire tidings reach the ears of the sailors. The first port they had docked at was in the grip of a terrible plague. Faced with a crisis and with morale low, greed, your father, you, made a decision. He gave every sailor in the fleet a flagon of rum, rum filled with poison. The men died one after the next their ships their treasure the poor girl and her dear grandfather all were swallowed by the waves perhaps the church had ordered that eternia alone be spared who can say for sure what we do know is that greed and greed alone made a triumphant return to gathalotio Though he had lost nearly his entire fleet, he had salvaged treasure enough to fill the church's coffers. He became a man of great standing in the church's hierarchy, and the very next year was blessed with his firstborn son. Denny. My brother. Yes. It was not long after this that the dark hand of the plague came to Eternia. But here, why not read for yourself your father's words? You have faced two truths. Have you the courage to... Okay, so she keeps giving me these items. I feel like I should probably take a look at them. Um, where is it? Oh, and does she give me new ones? Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through... Oh, where's my cursor? I'm gonna go through every single painting, because I'm guessing she's gonna give me more of these. Um, we can do command set 2 here. I'm gonna get all of the papers, and then at the end of it, I'm gonna go through all the papers, and I'm gonna scroll by. I'm not gonna read them, I'm gonna scroll by... So that way you guys, you guys can, uh, if you want to read them, you can just kind of pause the video very slowly and read it. Um, but I'm not going to read it because there's a lot of reading there and she's basically telling us the story as we go, you know. But I, but if you guys do want to see it, I will put it up on screen. But I might as well get all of the papers first. There's no reason to show you one now and then come back, you know. I'll just show you all the papers at once. But we got to get to the third. Oh, wait. Whoa, whoa. Oh, no. This is going to suck. Oh, this is going to hurt a bit. Because. Meg okay. Good. Basically, the only one that hurts them is you here. So, it's basically all I need to do. But I also want to grab everything. So. Yeah, but we're on the fourth floor. Already. See, right here, I have to run. Yeah, run. Run. And run. Yeah, because I'm not fighting these chomps. You was the only one that could really hurt them. And. While that's happening, everyone else is going to get hurt, so. I'll be fine with just a little bit of run in here. Anything there? Doesn't look like it, so we're going to keep moving. To another painting, it seems. Okay, we can fight these ones, so command set two here. Yeah. Adia hits these dogs a lot. I don't know what they're weak to, but they're weak to something. Take your time. You have read your father's words, I trust? Very well. 
I shall share with you the third truth. This is the story, the true untold story, of the Great Plague. The first deaths were in the eastern reaches of Eternia, in a sleepy border village. The mourners grieved for their loved ones, their wails echoing through the mountains. Eventually, the cries faded away, and a stillness settled over the land. From the depths of time it had found us, the world we feared most had become reality. As death lay heavy on the land, a young priest named Brave petitioned his elders. He sought to use the power of the crystals to treat the sick, but his petition was denied. Instead, the church sealed off the high roads. It cut off the border villages, leaving countless people to suffer and die. Angered at the church for forsaking the village of his birth, Brave resigned from the priesthood. He did not, however, abandon his duty. First, he saw to it that his friend Norzen of the Office of Medicine was given full authority to investigate the origins of the plague. He planted confederates in key positions, building a network that would allow him to monitor the inner workings of the church. In time, the plague released its grip on the world, though not because a cure had been found. It simply had no more victims to claim, until, that is, the coming of the second pandemic. A second wave of terror swept over the world. A new strain of the plague emerged, threatening to complete the extinction begun by the first. Thus began a long battle which pitted Norzen and his researchers against the deadliest disease the realm had ever known. Their work was relentless. Many researchers and their families sacrificed their lives to the cause. Unwilling to put his men at risk, Norzen took to testing new treatments on his own body, losing one of his five senses in the process. Then, just before she herself succumbed, one researcher discovered a feline immunity that promised to neutralize the disease. She was able to transfer the antibodies to her daughter, a young girl named Minette. So it was that a vaccine was formulated that would bring the second pandemic to an end. The whole story is faithfully recorded here, in Greed's Log. As the people came to learn of the terrible crimes committed by the Church, its authority began to crumble. In desperate hope of regaining the faith of the people, the Church issued a proclamation. It would attempt the Grand Ritual. It was this, more than anything, that spurred Brave the Templar to action. These events, too, are recorded in your father's log. Have you the courage to press on in search of the truth? Then you know where to find us.
Okay, everybody, so let's go ahead and try to get through one more floor here. And then we'll probably stop for today, but I want to at least try to get one more floor. Okay, got another Lilith's Kiss, which I haven't really used. Maybe we should use them at, like, the last battle just for fun or something. Yeah, we don't really use those. Alright, let's keep, keep, keep moving here. Dude, my headphones keep cutting in and out when I move my head, and it's absolutely tripping me out. Oop, there's a chest on this end, so let's go grab that. An elixir? Okay, those are good. If I didn't have his resurrection mist, at least. Or the one that increases HP by full. Yeah, we literally have almost free elixirs just with using two spells that cost nothing. Although they don't give me back MP, that's for sure. They just give me back X or uh, HP. But yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. You know what? Let's go ahead and read one more painting, and then we'll end off the episode. Must you always keep us waiting so? But no matter. The fourth truth awaits you. We shall tell you of the trials of the White Lion. The Templar Braves uprising took control of the capital of Eternia and the Temple of Earth, seat of the Church's power. The Church having lost its ability to govern, Eyes now turn to its military might, the disbanding of the Crystal Guard. Curiously enough, this order came from within. Greed Geniolja, of one of the high houses of the Three Cavaliers. His motives were self-serving. Greed sought to protect his family and closest allies at the expense of all others. Houses Geniolja and Camlin of the Disbander faction launched an attack on those who sought to keep the Crystal Guard intact. These opponents were led by two powerful houses that remained loyal to the order that Greed had begun to destroy. The two houses had in their service a swordsman, Jerome Balestra, whose skills were famed throughout the land. Balestra fought back bravely against the warriors of Houses Geniolja and Camlin. Almost single-handedly, he fended off waves of opponents. But in the end, he was just one man. Balestra's brave efforts were in vain. Gates were breached, castles and manors put to the torch. With his dying breaths, Balestra entrusted his boy Jan to the care of his loyal squire. A man by the name of Arngard. At the same time, a young man named Nikolai, who had been tasked with leading one wing of the attack, gazed upon the hellish scene. Though he had only been following orders, he was haunted by guilt for what he had done. Though the once proud Crystal Guard was now but a name, Nikolai continued to serve, and serve proudly. He petitioned the church leaders for its revival, recruiting Jan and other comrades to his cause. Was it all to atone for that day? But that is a story for another time. Now, we return to the tale of the White Lion. The Geniolja and Camlin clans defeated their foes one by one, growing their power through bribes paid for with plundered gold. But disbanding the Crystal Guard had unforeseen and tragic consequences in the neighboring regions of Itania. Unemployed soldiers turned to banditry, pillaging the villages that had survived the plague. Concerned that public order was breaking down, Houses Geniolja and Camlin formed their own private armies to put down the bandits. Their armies grew mightier and mightier. Among those promoted through the ranks were men who claimed to have destroyed the home of the witch that had caused the Great Plague. How many villages were razed to the ground to restore the illusion of peace? 
one tragedy giving rise to the next. A never-ending spiral of death and destruction. And at the root of it, one man's ambition. Jan, Nikolai, Bella. So much pain, so much suffering. So much sacrificed for the glory and might of House Genioja. This... this can't be true. Stay strong, you. You had nothing to do with any of this. But in the end, wealth and power could not buy immortality. The ambitious man, the foolish man, died of a common illness. So ends the story of greed, Genioja. Oh, how he entertained us so. <laughs> but you do not look so well. Mayhap the truth has taken its toll. Then I would advise you go no further. Farewell, my Minister of the Right. It has been so very delightful. Okay, we're going to end this episode off here, guys. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and comment as well as the channel, and I'll see you guys later. God bless, and goodbye.